Hi, I'm Willie with H5 Technology, and thank you for coming to my channel. I appreciate you being here. Tonight, we are going to look at the new Edge Router web interface. That's right, you're saying, what? Yes, they have redesigned, not the Edge Router, the Edge Switch. <laughs> they have redesigned the Edge Switch interface. And I'm going to put a link to this, but here's a little bit of a preview. We're going to go ahead and download this. We're going to upload it to our switch and we're going to take a look and there are some changes in here they they've made some changes like uh, instead of http https or ssl is default uh, they've disabled telnet enabled ssh by default you can have uh, 32 lags now instead of six lags and they have all kinds of system fixes so we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab this firmware real quick and i'm going to go ahead and download that and then we are going to log into our edge switch real quick and we're going to upload that all right and this interface is so beautiful i am shooting this in in full screen too instead of shooting it in just 720 because i'm not going to be doing anything at the command line so we're at our edge switch if you remember we installed an ssl certificate on that so we are going to go ahead and log in to this switch we're going to upload this new firmware and then uh, we are going to take a look around. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to go to the firmware upgrade and I am going to click the upgrade here and then I'm going to choose my file and I'm going to transfer it. Okay, I have selected the file that we downloaded and we're going to go ahead and hit begin transfer. It's going to upload this to the switch and then we're going to set it as the next, next active. We'll save that configuration and we're going to reboot. Now while this is uploading, I'm going to go ahead and pause this video and we'll be right back. All right, we are 100% transferred, so we're going to go ahead and close that. And you can see that the 1.7.4 beta 1 is going to be our next active. And so we'll go ahead and submit this and we'll save it. And then we will go ahead and restart the switch. And we're going to restart without a core dump. And yes, I'm 100% sure about that. And when the switch comes back up, we should be good to go with the new interface. So I'm going to pause this while the switch reboots. All right, so we are all rebooted. We are back at the login screen. And the very first thing that you're going to notice is that we have this thing that says New UI. Let's click on that. <coughs> And look at this. So now this is very in line from this point of view with everything that Ubiquity is currently doing. We can go back to the legacy interface and then they tell you right here by signing in we we are agreeing to the EULA. So let's go ahead and log into this guy and look at this interface. So what they wanted to do is they wanted to address some of the issues with how difficult the switches may have seemed to set up. I mean, the edge switch, they have a lot of options. The edge switches are extremely powerful. Powerful. They, they could have been intimidating as well. So what they've done is they've, they've put this UI on here and it will not have all of the options of the old UI. So you're going to have a couple options. If you need advanced things, you're going to go back to the old UI, which will be available, or you're going to SSH in and take care of it from the command line. So let's take a look at this. So up here we've got the logo. We've got this blue bar at the top. As you can see this is an Edge Switch 24 Lite running on the GUI uh, version 0.2.0. We've got our UNMS indicator over here. We have the legacy in in interface, change password, and logout. Then uh, over here we have a real-time throughput, how much data is being put through the switch. We have a percentage of active ports, so it's percentage and the number. Uh, port activity right here. Now remember this is beta, so this may not all be working and I can tell you right now my machine is plugged in and I'm not getting any port activity. But if we don't have people in the the beta program, uh, then they're never going to be able to fix this and make it awesome. Now you can see that the bandwidth is going up. I'm still not getting it over here, but if you look down here on port 2, Port 2 is not me. Port 2 is someone probably uh, paying, playing uh, Fortnite or Cuphead or something like that. So you've got that there. You've got port. I think I'm port 5. Yeah. I am port 5. So I'm putting out very minimal data. So let's look at another 
uh, port. Uh, or just look at these real quick. So you got the names. So you can rename a port right from here just by clicking on it, which is phen phenomenal. If we had PoE, we could see the PoE status here. This is not a PoE switch, so it's off. Obviously, receive, transmit, uh, mode right here. We can. So for gigabit to negotiate properly, it has to be auto, which is why you don't see gigabit here. You see auto. So if it's on auto and both devices uh, are gigabit, they should negotiate at a gigabit if you don't have a, a cable problem. Most of the time we see cabling issues when you're not getting proper gigabit negotiation or you've got one device that's doing who knows what. But you can force these other. So you've got 100, uh, uh, full and half, 10, full and half. And if you're going to do that, make sure you set the other side manually as well. You've got the lag information here. If uh, this, uh, this is not power, but it says that we can actually reset the port link. And then we have a configuration. So if we click configure on the port, it tells us port 1. We can disable, isolate, enable spanning tree, enable flow control, enable DHCP snooping. So we get all of our switches here. You can see port 26. That is the uplink from this switch back to my other switch. Then if we go over here to the VLANs, you can see all of the VLANs. We can create a new VLAN over here. We can apply uh, to all ports these VLANs. So you can see I've got some exemptions, some untagged. So we've got some untagged voice ports. We've got some untagged video ports. Uh, we've got some excluded ports, untagged default ports. Beautiful. You can delete the VLAN over here. Good looking interface. Come over here to uh, the settings. Now, I reported uh, this uh, that it did not keep the switch name. It defaulted back to UBNT Edge Switch when this Edge Switch is named something else. Um, we've got UNMS that says it's enabled, but it is not syncing with my UNMS server. Uh, in fact, my UNMS server is actually offline, which would be why it is not syncing. Uh, all of your IP management over here. Now, like I said, this is beta, so there are going to be bugs. And you know that the IP address of this switch is not 24.2. They understand this is an issue. They are working on it. So the whole point of beta is to get this into the hand of users who are going to give good feedback so that they can improve this later on. I have no remote syslog, but look how easy they have made this. You know, and here are our system actions down here. So we can back up the configuration, restore the configuration, locate the device, upgrade the firmware, or reboot the device. All right there. And then we can come over here, and this is the tools. So we can take a look at the MAC addresses and the IPs that it believes are uh, on the ports. You can see uh, this is basically your, your ARP table. Um, you can do all ports. You can specify it by port. So if I do 26, which is the uplink, you see all the IPs that are crawling around and the associated MAC addresses. We can run a ping from here. And you're going to get, uh, I don't know if it stops at 3. Nope, keeps going for I don't know how long. I don't know if it goes until we click stop or it stops at 10. So you get 10 pings. Beautiful. Um, and that's it. That's it for the new interface for now. I think they're going good places with this. Um, I don't think that the edge switch and edge routers always get the love uh, that they deserve and that they need. That They are extremely powerful. And I use edge devices probably still more than I do Unify because I need that fine grain control but go out get in the beta program check this out I will leave I will leave uh, this link down in the description and so that is it for tonight we're gonna have more voice over IP goodness for you later in the week all kinds of exciting videos coming we've got that Synology video coming and I've got some other things I just I wish I had more time to create videos because I've got some real good content but it, it is coming hang in there and I appreciate all of you if you like this video please give me a thumbs up please subscribe please comment and share Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, go to h5llc.com if you need network or voice over IP consulting. Uh, if you want to get on our newsletter so you can stay in touch with us if this YouTube thing ever goes away, that is also down on h5llc.com. 
www.thecoachmentor.com. You can also go to our Discord channel, which is down there. That's like a real-time chat forum. And Charlie's our administrator. He does an awesome job. If you want to buy some of this uh, gear, the Ubiquity gear, or any of the other gear that I've been featuring on the channel, you can use my Amazon affiliate link down there. It doesn't change your price, but it kicks a few bucks in. So we can keep the lab loaded up with this awesome gear. And as always, I want to thank you again, and we'll see you in the next video.